Uh, I don't. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear me. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Baker Memorial United Methodist Church, where our mission is living God's will to love, welcome, and share Christ with all. I'm Pastor John Lozer. It is a great honor and privilege to be with you in worship this morning, all of you who are in this space, and also all of you who are joining us on the live stream. Welcome. Peace be with you. <clears throat> I have a special message from the Open and Accepting Group. On Friday, they delivered 28 large bags of winter apparel donations to Clara's Closet at Central Park United Methodist Church, where newly settled Afghan refugees can shop for free. Recently, a young pregnant Afghan couple received suitable se seasonal clothing there. The husband had come in wearing flip-flops. Thank you, bless you for your generous support and compassion toward others in need. Today, after our service, there will be Christmas crafts at 11 o'clock, all are welcome. And also there will be a, rise meet, a, a ride meeting following the craft. Also coming up on Tuesday at 7, there is a prayer meeting, and also at 7, there is the continuation of the Advent Sign Language class that Lisa is leading. And on Wednesday, the Ladies' Bible Study will meet at 9.30 in the morning, and there will be a grief share at 4 in the afternoon. And on Friday, the ride event called Christmas Chaos will be taking place from 5.30 to 7.30, where there will be fun and games stories and activities for everyone all are welcome to attend and there is still some need for help if there are in, if there are any of you who are interested or willing to help with that please see lisa and lastly poinsettia orders um, are due our forms are available in the same entrance and are in the december newsletter the order deadline is december 12th and one last thing I was asked to announce. We apologize that there will be no contemporary praise songs this morning as Jeff is on vocal rest in preparation for an opera performance this afternoon. Okay. Would you join me for an opening prayer? Good morning, most merciful God. We are here to seek you. We are here to praise you. We are here to receive all that you desire to pour into us this morning. Open our hearts and our minds that we may receive from you and offer to you all that you have planned for us in this worship service and beyond. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And would you continue in, in an attitude of prayer as we listen to the prelude this morning?
I would like to invite the Bachman family to come forward for our Advent liturgy. morning. As we continue with our Advent theme, Prepare the Way, we look again to the prophets of old to help us make our preparations for the Lord coming into our hearts anew this season. The prophet Malachi tells us that even when we are in the hottest of refining challenges, God is present and is ready to help us through them. John the Baptist repeats the call of Isaiah to straighten the paths level the mountains, and fill in the valleys to make smooth the way that leads to our final destination, God's heavenly kingdom, where we can live in peace and unity with all. We light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, as a sign of our assurance that though the road of life can be difficult, we believe it is worth the journey toward our heavenly Father's kingdom. Amen. And now would you join in the, sing in the sung response, which will be on the screens. in our opening hymn, which is number 182 in your hymnals and will also be on the screen. Word of God, come down on earth.
before you sit down, would you please greet each other with a friendly wave, smile behind the mask? And will the children come forward for the children's message with Lisa? Good morning. How are you? I'm not ready yet. I'm busy. I'm so busy. What? Good morning, Gabe. How are you? He's okay. So, good morning. How are you? I need your help. Oh my goodness. Is it green? Okay. It's not pink or white or orange. It's green. Okay. All right. I need your help. Seriously. Seriously need your help. Look at this. Just look at this. Do you see this? This is a wreath that needs to hang up in my house. This is a stocking that needs to hang up. This is, I don't even know what that is. This is a stocking that needs to hang up. This one. And look at all these animals. And they, oh, this is a stocking for my cat. Isn't it the cutest? Meow. Look at all these things. And, and this needs to hang on my door. And, and this. I know you do have a cat. And I need to finish all my Christmas cards. Look at all this stuff I have to get ready for Christmas. I'm not ready for Christmas. I'm just not ready. Oh, my gosh. I need your help to get ready for Christmas. I have presents to wrap. I need to talk to Santa. We got some things to discuss. Definitely, Gabe. I need to get these cards written. Maybe you guys can do it for me. And I need to hang all this stuff up. I'm just so busy preparing for Christmas. Guess what? I forgot what Christmas is all about. It's about Jesus and his birthday. I was so busy getting all this stuff out and trying to get all these cards out and to get things decorated. Gabe, I don't have a tree yet. That I forgot about Jesus and all this stuff. Look at it. Stand back here with me. Look at that mess we made. Oh, I made it. You're right. <laughs> Look at that mess I made. But it's in our way, and we can't get to the manger scene. We can't get to where Jesus is going to get born because it's all in our way. And if you listen, we just sang a song that said we need to prepare the way for the Lord. So I want you to help me. Have a seat. You could step over it. That's true. But I might trip if I step over it, and then I'll fall right on my face and need stitches. So some of my friends out there have been taking my sign language class. And they know how to prepare the way for the Lord. So I would like you to help me. So you're going to need your hands. Ready? Very simple. So go like this. Then now make the path straight. Away. And make it back for the Lord. Make an L so you need to elevate your arm. For Drew to get to, we have to prepare. And we go straight. Straight. The way. Very good. So even though I still need to put all this stuff up and I need to prepare at my house, I need to prepare my heart. Yes. To get ready for Jesus. Yes, Gabe. My, my papa has a very cute Christmas tree. Does he really? Is it already decorated? Yes. And, 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 and he has beautiful little trees. Cool beans. So. Can you help me prepare the way for the Lord? Let's pray real, real quickly here, and then you're going to go have some fun. Dear God, help us prepare the way for the Lord. Make our paths straight. Amen. Amen. All right, see you later. I have to clean up my mess. Okay, our Old Testament reading this morning is from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, as was mentioned in the Advent lighting. The Lord who rules over all says, I will send my messenger. He will prepare my way for me. Then suddenly the Lord, 
you are looking for will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant will come. He is the one you long for. But who can live through this day when he comes? Who will be left standing when he appears? He will be like a fire that makes things pure. He will be like soap that makes things clean. He will act like the one who makes silver pure. And he will purify the Levites just as gold and silver are purified with fire. Then these men will bring proper offerings to the Lord. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to him. And it will be as if it was in days and years gone by. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join in the following hymn, and you may stand if you'd like, but please remember you may also stay seated if you prefer. It's number 203, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. for our responsive reading. And Jeff and Pastor John will lead us in this little bit of singing that's in the beginning, middle, and end. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great grave its greatest son. The God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised us up a mighty savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham 
to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. And at this time, I would call us to consider once again what God would have us offer back to serve God in this time of Advent, preparation, waiting, if you feel so moved during the anthem, you're welcome to come forward and place your offerings in the plates.
We do give you praise and thanksgiving, most merciful God, for all of the gifts that you have given to us. We pray that what you have motivated us to return to you, Lord, for the use of sharing the gospel with others. I pray you will give us wisdom on how to use these gifts for your good purposes, for the building of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Would you please be seated for the gospel reading? The Gospel reading this morning is from Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Tiberius Caesar had been ruling for 15 years. Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea. Herod was the ruler of Galilee. His brother Philip was the ruler of Iterius and Trachonitis. Lysanias was ruler of Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas were high priests. At that time, God's word came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the countryside around the Jordan River. There he preached that people should be baptized and turn away from their sins. Then God would forgive them. Here is what is written in the book of Isaiah the prophet. It says, A messenger is calling out in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley will be filled in. Every mountain and hill will be made level. Their crooked roads will become straight. The rough ways will become smooth, and all God's people will seek God's salvation. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Would you please be seated? So here we are, second Sunday of Advent, a season of preparation. Our theme is preparing our hearts for what God desires to pour into our hearts this season of Advent. Are you preparing your hearts? Are you ready or getting ready to respond to God's call. In this reading of Malachi that Jenny read for us earlier, it is a prophecy of the messenger who comes before Jesus, which is John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah in the Luke 3 reading. In that reading of Malachi, at the very end it says, it will be as it was in days and years gone by. What God was doing and is doing is bringing restoration to God's original plan for all God's people. The plan of salvation, the plan of redemption, the plan of making whole what is broken. John the Baptist was preaching this baptism of repentance. And that is not necessarily an unusual thing in the Old Testament, even though we don't see the word baptism in the Old Testament. John was calling people to a public act of repentance. For anything and everything that anyone had done that had gone against God's will. Now, I want to show you some photographs. Do we have the photographs up there? We do. Now, you will notice what looks like a big hole in the ground that has a bridge over it. That is what is called a mikvah. It is an ancient ritual bath. 
that was uncovered at the place where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in Israel, Qumran. Can we go to the next slide? You will notice there are stairs. What that was used for was a ritual cleansing prior to entering into worship in that time period, in the Old Testament time period. People would just simply walk down the stairs into the water and be ritually cleansed and come back up. Can we go to the next slide? Same area of Qumran, you will also notice, I know you can't read the sign, but it says ritual bath. There are several other big holes in the ground for many people to simply walk into these ritual baths to prepare themselves for worship before they went into the temple. Can we go to the next slide? Now, you might notice, or you might recognize, if you can see him, the gentleman in the sunglasses, that is Bishop Webb. That is the bishop of our conference. In 2018, he took a very large group of people from all over the conference to Israel, and he is standing in front of what is believed to be the traditional place where John the Baptist was doing what we just read about in the Luke Gospel. He was calling people to come and be baptized as an act of public repentance. Now, this is a modern picture, of course, but I'm going to ask you just to use your imagination for a moment and imagine that the, the bishop is John the Baptist calling the people, come and be baptized. Now, you see there's a bunch of people in the foreground there. Can we go to the next slide? There is one individual who chose to be baptized in the Jordan River that day. It's the man with the beard and no hair on his head. And the gentleman in the water with him is another pastor who came with him. He chose to be baptized in the Jordan River. Can we go to the next slide? Now, you can only see one of them, but kind of, sort of. I tried to crop this to make it bigger, but it's kind of hard to see. The, um, the railing that you see right in the middle of the picture is kind of blocking the man's head. But he was dunked, total immersion, into the Jordan River to be baptized by his pastor as an act, not necessarily of public repentance the way John the Baptist was calling for baptism, but a Christian baptism. A baptism where he is publicly proclaiming his faith in Jesus Christ and he wants to go through the sacrament of baptism or he wanted to go through that in a public way in that particular trip to Israel. Now, those coming to John the Baptist were responding not only to John's call, but God's call upon their lives. They took a step of faith into that water, and John baptized them. He called it a baptism of repentance. But then he said, Christ will come and baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. So when we baptize people in the Christian faith, we have the faith, according to the teaching of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit enters into us when we are baptized. Baptism is just once in a Christian's life. It's not necessary to repeat. And the, we did not read the passage, but we will read it again later, where Jesus Call, responds to John's call, is baptized by John, although he does not need to repent for anything, he b is baptized, and then John sees the Spirit coming down and descending upon him like a dove. 
to demonstrate what happens when we receive that baptism. Receiving the Holy Spirit. Once we receive that Holy Spirit, then we are enabled to perhaps more clearly hear that call of God upon our lives. This past week, on Thursday morning, I was in prayer, in intercessory prayer, for another person that God had laid on my heart. And God placed in my mind a need, a desire, to share with that individual a call for that person to pray for his or herself, rather than just having me intercede for that individual. Now, I had no idea how I was going to do this until God said, just send it in a text. So I did. It took me 50 minutes to word it in a way that I believed this individual would receive, and then I sent it. And I thought, well, either I'm going to be rebuked or I'm going to get some kind of an affirmation. About an hour and a half later, I received a text back that said, thank you for your guidance. So I was not rebuked, and I was listening, apparently, clearly to what God was calling me to do, to just simply share a message with this individual about praying for oneself and one's needs rather than relying on other people to pray for them. Now I want to read one section of the upper room before I finish. This is, this is how I will close. And I read this back in November, but it fits what we're talking about today. To hear the call of God and to respond. This is from Jessica E. Dutton in Maine. She writes, and this is from uh, the passage of Scripture that she has on here is John 10, 27, which says, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So she writes this. Wood ducks build their nests in hollow, rotted tree cavities, which are sometimes up to 60 feet above the ground. Does anybody know what a wood duck is? Anybody ever seen? So some of you are shaking your heads. Okay, very good. Within a day of hatching, the ducklings climb up out of their nests. Following their mother's beckoning call, they leap from the safety and comfort of the nest and fall to the ground below before making their way to the water where their mother awaits. The ducklings do not hesitate to follow the voice they know and trust. They make this jump before they have learned to fly. Yet they trust the call to come. After discovering the fascinating beginning of a wood duck's life, I began to wonder how much I trust the voice of the one who cares for me. Am I willing to leave all that is safe and familiar and follow the shepherd's call? even if that means leaping into the great unknown. The duckling's obedience is natural and instinctive. They show no fear, only trust. What a strong reminder to focus on the shepherd's voice with full assurance of his loving guidance. The people that John the Baptist was calling to come to be baptized in repentance, heard a voice that perhaps they didn't know, but for some reason God gave them the reason to trust this voice, and they responded in a positive way. I believe God has a voice calling each one of us to somehow step out of that comfortable zone that we live in to perhaps share the message of hope of this season of light and preparation. Hope that there is more to life than all of what we see around us that seems to be so difficult. We have that message within us. The Lord has poured it into our hearts. 
We receive it every time we worship, every time we come for Holy Communion. God pours more into our hearts. What is God calling each one of you to perhaps step out in faith and share with someone else who needs to hear this message of hope that God has so graciously given to us? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your word to us today. I pray that each one of us will open our ears and our hearts to your still, small voice to receive your call and respond to it appropriately. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate Holy Communion with an open table. That means all are welcome to a fresh anointing of God's grace through receiving the sacrament. Let's join together in the confession and prayer. Merciful God, we come before you as a broken people. We confess that we have not paid attention to you gently leading us to do your will. Forgive us, dear Lord. To you alone we lift our souls. and you alone we place our trust. For you are the God of our salvation, abounding in mercy and steadfast love. Help us remain alert and watchful for the coming of your promised one, the one who comes with power and glory, the one drawing near to bring our salvation. Amen. And now in the silence of our hearts, let's talk to God about our personal confessions. Amen. This is the message we have heard from God and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn more anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send empty away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was finished, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of my blood. It is the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. I'll ask our servers to come forward to prepare at this time. Our ushers will guide and direct you to come to the front over on this side. Once again, please have your hands ready to receive a bread, a piece of bread that will be dropped into your hands by Mimi. Then come over to the middle and receive the bread. And then come over to Bill and he will hand you on a plate a small cup. Please grab it by the rim and then walk over here, receive it, and drop it in the receptacle. If you need gluten-free bread, please let Mimi know. If you prefer to be served in the pew, just put your hand up so our server will come to you. The table is open. All are welcome. Come. What God has for you. I will be over here to offer prayer.
we intercede on behalf of others who are in need of prayer this morning. Good morning, Lord God. We are so grateful for your presence among us, for the gift of faith that you have given to each one of us, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that you continue to provide for us, especially through this sacrament of Holy Communion. We thank you, Lord, for the gift and the privilege of coming before your holy throne to pray in intercession for other people who are in need. And we lift these persons to you this morning for Melissa and for Joey and for Emily, who are all in need of healing this morning, Lord. We pray your mercy and your healing presence be upon them by the power of your spirit. We pray for May and for Dolores and for Charmaine, who are also in need of healing and mercy. We ask that be done in the lives of these persons as you see fit, Lord, for their good. We pray for Anne and Ellen and Wes and the Wade family who are also seeking healing and wholeness in this time in their lives. We pray for Christopher, Christopher and his family who are missionaries and seek your presence and your protection and your grace upon them in this time. We pray for Janet, for Jack, for Linda and Glenn, and Roxanne, who are all also in need of your grace, your mercy, and your healing touch. We pray for Ellen and for Eileen, who is normally with us but is unable to be with us today, we ask also your healing touch upon them as well as you see fit. And for Mia, who is recovering, and for Carol, who is waiting, we ask, Lord, your mercy, your grace, your peace, your salvation be upon each one. Come, Holy Spirit, Meet the needs of your people as you see fit. Bring the gifts that you have planned for each of these persons and for each of us that we may continue to glorify you in all that we do. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Would you stand as you are willing and able in our closing song of worship, God Almighty, we are waiting. The words will be on the screens.
now. And now. I'm not working. Oh, there we go. And now. And now for something completely different. Go in peace. Remembering what God has poured into your hearts and minds this morning. And share whatever God leads you to share with someone else. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.